Good morning, class 12. We are back with another topic. And uh, yesterday we have done the chemical properties of the formaldehyde. And I accept it was a lot of work for yesterday. It was the longest class. It exceeded one hour time. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, but we had to do that class in one day because we could not leave some properties of formaldehyde for the later. So I had to finish that. I hope you have understood the um, chemical properties, reactions, tests for formaldehyde. And I'm also sure that you have checked in the description the links to the other videos where you could have uh, seen the tests, le the laboratory tests. I'm sorry, I couldn't uh, check the feedback from you, but I will check today anyway. And uh, I will first uh, uh, answer a few questions from the yesterday's lecture. I, di I didn't see all the, all the homeworks, but few homeworks that I came through and I there was one question asked by Alishba Zafar, uh, where she was asking about, about trimer. Like, what is a trimer? Uh, tri means three, mer means unit. So if any compound is produced by three molecules of similar kind, it is called a trimer. So metaformaldehyde is a trimer of formaldehyde. So it is produced when three molecules, three units of formaldehyde combine. If I have some space on the back, I will, this is first years, uh, I will again try to show you. Now this is one molecule of formaldehyde, okay? One unit. This is the sorry carbon. This is the other unit. And this is the other unit of formaldehyde. So how many units, how many MERS are these? Three units. Okay. This pi bond comes over here, this pi bond goes there, this pi bond goes there. So when three units combine. You get uh, carbon, single bond, oxygen, single bond, carbon, single bond, oxygen, single bond, carbon, single bond, oxygen, single bond, carbon. Every, every carbon has two hydrogens. So CH2, CH2, C. This product is called metaformaldehyde. Now, it is a trimer, trimer, because tri means three and mer means units. This uh, metaformaldehyde is also called trioxane or trioxin. Trioxane or trioxin or 135 trioxin 1 comma 3 comma 5 trioxin now this is the same this is the formaldehyde so trimer means uh, a compound which is formed by the combination of three units now you should also remember in the manufacture of benzene one benzene molecule is formed from three acetylene molecules in the preparation of benzene. If you, if you remember, it's a fourth preparation of benzene in the seventh chapter. This way, benzene is a trimer of acetylene, just as trioxane is a trimer, trimer of formaldehyde. So this question came across. I just wanted to explain. And now we go to the our lecture today's lecture is about chemistry of acetone 
This is acetone, right? Similar structures. Acetone, uh, I just pre-wrote all this so that my lecture is to the point and I'm not going all over the place, not wasting your time. Acetone is the first member of the ketone family. As we all know, it is the first ketone. Propanone, the, co the, co the common name is dimethyl ketone, two methyl to a ketone carbonyl group. IUPIC calls it 2-propanone or propane 2 one If you want a capital P, you can go propane 2 one Otherwise, 2-propanone will also work. And acetone is naturally found in wood spirit. If you know wood, yes, when we burn wood, previously energy was found by burning wood. Even these days in villages, there's no natural gas. So the people of the village use, uh, they burn wood. When wood is burned, a dark brown liquid is produced from the, from the wood, which contain methyl alcohol. You know, the number one ingredient of wood spirit is methyl alcohol, but it also contains acetone. So this is a natural uh, source of acetone. Acetone is found in our blood and urine. Uh, basically, it is the product of metabolism. When our gastrointestinal system uh, metabolizes the food we take, the aldehydes, the glucose, the glucose, they are burned as uh, fuel. However, the ketones, they are excreted through urine. So a normal amount of acetone in urine or blood is okay. But if you have excess amount of uh, acetone, that shows that you are suffering from diabetic mellitus. Diabetic mellitus is a disease when our cells cannot consume uh, the energy that we take or consume glucose due to the uh, insulin resistance problem or cells become insulin resistant so that is the thing okay so there are two types of this type 1 type 2 in type in type 1 our pancreas don't make uh, i'm not sure and i shouldn't talk about things that i don't know <laughs> but i just wanted to give you an explanation so an excess amount of uh, acetone and urine will indicate the, the disease called uh, diabetes or also called diabetic mellitus. So preparation, how we prepare uh, acetone. Now, guys, secondary propyl alcohol, you know, if you use primary propyl alcohol, it will give you aldehyde. I'll do that as well. See that. You have CH3, sorry, CH3, CH2, CH2 OH. Now this is a primary alcohol. If we oxidize the primary alcohol, please don't write this in your copy because this is to give you the introduction. These are the oxidizing couple. This first carbon is oxidized. So you have CH3, CH2 and CHO or C double bond OH. This is primary propyl alcohol and this is propenal, the uh, aldehyde. So every primary alcohol, when it is oxidized, it gives you aldehyde. But if you use a secondary alcohol, my friend, then you know secondary alcohol, the OH group is bonded to a carbon other than first carbon. So it is in the middle. So once you oxidize the secondary alcohol, you are very strongly, uh, you, you're going to get the uh, carbonyl group uh, in the middle somewhere. So let, let me show you the secondary alcohol, okay? CH3, all right? And then CH, and then OH on the top. I'll make OH here. And 
let's say CH3 here. Now this is secondary propyl alcohol, also called 2 propanol, 2 propanol. Sorry. Now, if you oxidize this, adding oxygen, which comes from the most trusted oxidizing couple, sulfuric acid concentrated and the potassium dichromate. Now, here I want to point out this hydrogen and this hydrogen, they bond with oxygen to form H2O. Now, just think yourself, if these two H are gone, then this P orbital of oxygen and this carbon orbital, they overlap make a pi bond here. So these will make a pi bond here. And you will see CH3, C double bond O, and then CH3. You can make double bond up and CH3 for, straight forward. This is called acetone or 2 propanone or propane 2 1. Since we are writing the preparation of acetone, we don't we mean to we, we to write this in a in a fair copy, but this just to give you the introduction that primary alcohols are always oxidized to uh, aldehydes and secondary alcohols are oxidized to ketones and tertiary alcohols are not oxidized because there's no hydrogen. Remember, you need alpha hydrogen, a hydrogen attached to alpha carbon. So tertiary alcohols don't have alpha hydrogen. I can make it for you here. Uh, CH3, C, CH3. Now this is a tertiary alcohol. Now to remove two hydrogen, th this carbon doesn't have a hydrogen. So removing a, a electron donating uh, alkyl group is difficult. So primary alcohols, aldehydes, secondary alcohols, ketones and tertiary alcohols, not oxidized. All right, is it clear? This is the method to prepare uh, the acetone. The next method is by heating strongly acetic acid. Now, acetic acid is found in vinegar. It is also a natural product. So when you heat it as high as 500 degrees C, this is organic chemistry. So this is a very high temperature. So heating some, something at a high temperature in absence of air or catalyst is known as distillation, destructive distillation, it's also called cracking, and it's also called pyrolysis. So pyrolysis, so what's going to happen, the two molecules of acetic acid, acetic acid, also called ethanoic acid, because of two carbon, will break and then recombine uh, into 